Hello ladies and gentlemen, here is everything you need to know about dress codes for all occasions. My name is Gia, I'm an etiquette consultant based here in Los Angeles and first off I want to get into why dressing well is important. So why is it important to dress well? There are so many reasons why. The first things first is you do not waste time. This means that you don't make excuses for why you're not presented well. For example, if you show up with your shirt crinkled, with your hair a mess, all disheveled with your outfit, and you go to a meeting that is important and everybody's wondering why you stand out like a sore thumb, like a proper disruptive mess. So it's a sign of respect and also you have to explain yourself and say, sorry, I'm, my hair is not right and uh, my outfit is not proper and uh, like you have so many excuses and you waste other people's time with your excuses and most of all you waste your own time by not presenting yourself well and representing yourself the best way that you can. There's a quote by Tom Ford, dressing well is good manners. And what does it mean to dress well? Dress well is simply to dress appropriately. This means that if you go to an event and you make or break the event. So what do you mean by that? If you've ever been to a wedding, you know that there is a certain dress code when you show up to a wedding. You just don't you don't show up in your pajamas. You don't show up to a business convention in a bikini. There's a, everybody wears lounge suits or something conservative to cover themselves up. I have been to a wedding where everyone was dressed mostly immacul immaculately did a very good job and then one person showed up in jeans and a utility jacket as, and it had a giant stain on the back so it cheapened the event for everyone but there's other times where you can make the event so if you're the one who's lifting up everybody else's expectations for how the event the occasion is supposed to be then people look to you for inspiration and a lot of people will appreciate that for example i went to an afternoon tea and i was the only one dressed properly for the afternoon tea with my shoulders covered. I wore a hat because it was formal day dress. There were women and even a gentleman there who had uh, very expensive clothes, way more expensive than mine, and they were very well put together. Some of them were not necessarily, they were extremely casual, but I live in California, that's bound to happen, and especially in Los Angeles. A lot of the people were wearing incredible designers that I, look, I love, but they are nowhere within a lot of people's budgets. <laughs> this gentleman had a matching bag with his mother of this $300,000 bag from this one brand that um, every now and again they will have limited edition collector's items. So I, I immediately saw that and recognized it from a Christie's auction and he was looking at me in my outfit giving me the nod of appreciation. He was impressed and so I was wearing a $40 hat from Amazon. You don't have to just spend a lot of money to look good, you just have to make sure that your clothes are clean, your clothes are not creased, so steamed or ironed. Make sure that you groom also. I'll create a whole other video for grooming. Keep it simple and the simpler the better. So for gentlemen, if you wear a simple shirt that is pristinely taken care of with some dark trousers that are smart and dress shoes, you are more than prepared for any event and then have a jacket in case you have to get in with a jacket. Make sure the jacket suits you, that it fits your body type. But if you go simple, you will always win. Same for women. Wear a lovely dress or wear a smart trouser, whatever it may be. Make sure that you look good in it, not that the dress looks good on you because a lot of the times it's you have the style, you carry the attitude and then the clothes are there for happenstance. Okay, now for the actual dress codes, it's going to go from most formal to least formal so starting off with white tie dress. This lesson is directly from my course within my finishing school, so you can check it out, link below at dixonetiquette.com. Dress codes. These are the most formal forms of dress that you will find, especially if you go to extremely formal dinners. And here in Los Angeles, it's quite the opposite. It's very casual here. However, my husband is from England and when going to a show, he and his friends were properly dressed in a dinner jacket, also known as black tie, and they would see other gentlemen dressed in white tie. So I'm about to show you this, all, the, all that entails white tie. And the thing is, they were wearing a cane and a top hat, and it was with tails. So it was their whole outfit, but you could tell that it wasn't a costume. It was truly who they are. So you will see this around the world at the most formal events. And above all, England is the most formal place that you will visit. So when it comes to these dress codes, and if you attend um, diplomatic dinners heads, with heads of state or official dinners, depending on the different type of dinner, you will see people dressed in their decorations. You'll see them in white tie. You'll see them in black tie with their dinner jacket. You don't say, um, you don't say blazer or smart jacket. You say 
coat. So you refer to your blazer as your coat. Um, and also, I have been to quite a few of these where it's about $50,000 a plate. It's ridiculous, I know, but these are different um, scenarios that you might find these. And as a child growing up in this situation, when I would go to international school or um, even abroad as an adult, this is what you will see. So white tie. White tie dress code is also known as full evening dress, full dress, evening dress, or informally as tails. White tie is the most formal of dress codes and is not common today. So I'm going to start with the most formal and get to the, mu to the most casual. So at the end of this, it's going to be flip-flops. <laughs> so I'm wearing flip-flops now as I am <laughs> speaking in this, recording this. So before the Second World War, it was standard evening dress for gentlemen, as may have been seen in period dramas on television such as Downton Abbey. So when to wear white tie, this is worn in the evening today in certain royal ceremonies as balls and state and library dinners white tie may also be specified for formal evening weddings and for some charity balls so i was at a wedding and all the gentlemen wore white tie and also uh their military dress so i forgot it's called their their blues their dress blues and then they have dress whites depending on the season so and then they all also have would change for the reception into their mess hall clothing so it also is the dress code for some Highland balls for those not mend for the for those men not entitled to wear the kilts or trues. So trues are like the kilts with the tartan, but they're trousers. It is no longer seen at the theater or opera, and opera cloaks and silk top hats, along with canes and white gloves, are now only seen on stage. So I have an ancestor who had his car built around his top hat so that he could wear it inside his car. So <laughs> a long time ago, cars were the chassis and then um, the hood. So they were bought as separate pieces uh, instead of just having one piece. So he had it custom made to fit around over his hat so he could wear it inside and not mess up his hair. <laughs> White tie will always be stated on the invitation itself. Many organizations hosting events will say white or black tie, as they are aware that the former may be difficult for some invitees. So white tie for men includes a black single-breasted tailcoat in black wool, barathea, or ultra-fine herringbone with silk, peaked lapels, often gross grain, worn unbuttoned. The coat is shorter at the front than a morning coat. Black trousers with a natural taper and two lines of braid down the outside leg. A white Marcella cotton pique shirt with a starched detachable wing collar and double cuffs. Cufflinks and studs, the shirt will usually be closed with studs rather than buttons. These may be plain white or decorative. A low-cut white Marcella evening waistcoat, double or single-breasted. A thin white hand-tied Marcella bow tie, highly polished or patent black lace-up shoes, worn with black lace-up traditionally ribbon, so satin or silk, and black socks. In winter, a black overcoat and white silky, uh, white and white silk scarf may be worn. So the most, the more formal shoes are, the more sleek they look, the less embellishment they typically have on them, as you can see in this photo here. White tie for women consists of full-length formal evening dress. It is traditional but not essential to show décolletage. Shorter dresses or trousers, no matter how smart, are not acceptable. Jewelry can be striking, so this is the time to go all out. Um, this is the time for the finest jewels and gems, including tiaras. Traditionally, these were worn by the first, for the first time by brides, and it is incorrect for young girls to wear tiaras on any occasion. So if you are married, you wear a tiara after 6 o'clock, and hats are off after 6 o'clock. Black after 6 o'clock, no more brown. Evening bags should be small and elegant. And if you have one that converts into, into a minaudier, into, excuse me, if you have, see, as in the photos here, they're all carrying minaudiere and clutches. So if you have one that has a chain attached that so you can convert it in case you get tired of carrying it around or you have food or drinks or you want to relax, that is also an option. Gloves. Long evening gloves are traditionally worn at balls and dinners when the dress code is white tie, but are no longer compulsory at many events. They work best with sleeveless dresses, but older women may wear them with cap or short sleeves. With long sleeves, it is better to dispense with gloves rather than wear short ones. 
Gloves should be worn en route to an event, in a receiving line when shaking hands and dancing. They are removed when eating, even a canapé, and at the dinner table. They should be taken off finger by finger and rested on the lap under the napkin. Women's evening coats. For formal evening events, daytime coats look out of place. A smart evening coat, cloak, pashmina, or wrap in a suitable material is preferable. Variations of white tie. An alternative to white tie on certain occasions may be national costume, for example, Indian, Chinese, or Arabian. This will usually be stated on an invitation. Certain societies or clubs may give balls at which their own evening dress coats are worn, usually colored tailcoats, red, blue, or green, with special facings. These are worn with a white tie and waistcoat, but often with ordinary dinner jacket trousers, non-member male guests not entitled to the club coat usually wear black tie. The dress coat full dress ceremonial is occasionally seen for very formal or state occasions. For evenings, this may be usually interpreted as white type for civilians, but it is important to ask and check with the host or organizer. For daytime events such as state funerals, it can mean dress uniform for those in the services, robes for peers or judges, or particular vestment for clerics, and usually morning dress or simple business attire for others. So. You can only wear uniform if you are still serving in the uniform. If you are retired from the military, um, you do not wear your um, decorations or if you are not serving as a, a head of state, if you are not serving in a title. So in a current um, title representing the government. Decorations, if it is white tie dress code and the event is royal or state occasion or a very formal event in say the city, then the dress code may state evening dress decorations it is correct to wear decorations in the present of presence of the queen, but very unusual to wear them at a private event or charity ball, however grand. It would generally be more of a mistake to wear them than not to do so. If decorations are asked for, then knights and dames should wear their most senior chivalric orders to which they belong than all of their decorations. So it's neater and it looks better, I think, personally. And stars such as the garter or thistle are displayed on the left side of the evening coat or dress. Knight's Grand Cross of an order may also, um, excuse me, may also wear a sash and badge. There are also medals that may be worn on a ribbon round the neck just below the tie. Others may be worn as miniatures on a bar. And this is also usual when the dress coat is black tie and decorations. In practice, ex-service people are usually familiar with the wearing of medals, as are members of orders. If in doubt when attending a royal event, then the best thing is to ask the palace or rel relevant private secretary. It goes without saying that no one should wear decorations to which they are not entitled. Obviously, it's called stolen valor here in the United States and it's against the law. Even as fancy dress, these may offend, for example, to genuine veterans, so street with care. Decorations are very beautiful, and you might even see decorations in a cemetery. You might see them on a tree as a memorial in the United States, or excuse me, in the United Kingdom. I was visiting in London recently this past summer after the Jubilee, thank goodness for none of the crowds, and every beautiful monument was a memorial of some type of war where people lost their lives, and you would see the Victoria Cross everywhere, so it's the highest degree that you can um, earn as these people gave their lives for the land that they were fighting for. And it's really beautiful to see all these decorations in person and what you can see them not necessarily on someone's clothes. Black tie. Black tie dress code, which is less formal than white tie, is the most frequently encountered formal evening wear worn for dinners, both public and private, parties and balls, as well as some season events such as Glyndebourne. It may also be described as dinner jackets, dress for dinner or in America as tuxedos. So you know someone's American if they say tuxedo and you say DJ or you don't say it, you write DJ when you uh, get ready for dinner in England and you'd never have to spell out dinner jackets, but you do not say DJ and you would like text it or write it to your friend or uh, in an invite sometimes if it's not as formal. So 
some because you can have black tie where it's not that formal. Also, a host may also say we're going to change for dinner, which will traditionally indicate black tie. It should be described as a dinner jacket, not a dinner suit. Black tie for men is a black wool, barathea, or ultra-fine herringbone dinner jacket, single-breasted or double-breasted with no vents, silk peated lapels or a shawl collar, and covered buttons. White dinner jackets were traditionally worn in hot climates, but not usually in Britain, even in the summer, because it's it, this is the only summer that they've had where it's actually sunny every single day of the season. However, in England, summer sometimes can be just two days of being 75 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so trousers are black with a natural taper and a single row of braid down each outside leg. A white evening shirt with a Marcella collar, bib and double cuffs with a turned down collar, not a wing collar, worn with cufflinks and studs. A plain silk shirt with buttons may be worn, but any kind of ruffles or frills should be avoided. Alternatively, a fly fronted shirt where the buttons are concealed is acceptable. Adults should avoid novelty shirts and ties. This is the time to keep it simple. And personally, I think men look better at a formal occasion, even considering on a date when they do keep it simple because dressing up doesn't have to be a bunch of embellishments or peacocking. Remember the loudest that, or excuse me, the emptiest piggy banks rattle the loudest. You don't want that kind of attention. And the more, also the more sleek and simple you look, the more formal it is and leaves the eye better along your frame. Studs may be black or decorative. A black hand-tied bow, avoid ones which are pre-tied. Please tie your own bow. Get into the practice of this and get into the practice, ladies, of doing this for your gentlemen. If you have a son, if you have family, if you have a nephew, if you have a boyfriend, if you have a husband, you, a grandpa, father, whomever it is, learn how to do, the, do this in your life. Learn how to tie a tie, learn how to tie a black tie, a bow tie, so that you have that skill and nobody can take that away from you. Black, highly... Um, excuse me, the size of the bow tie should be proportionate to the size of the wearer. The wear, wearer, that's a hard word, sorry. Um, black highly polished or patent lace-up shoes and black silk socks. Cummerbunds are not considered essential but may be worn. A matching and cummerbund in a non-conventional shade, pastels rather than burgundy and black, should be treated with caution. So the origin, the origin story of cummerbunds is that that's where you hold your opera tickets. It's basically a pocket. Waistcoats may be worn, although they are not seen very often unless you go to, say, a wedding and you'll see a lot of people wear waistcoats and refer to it as a waistcoat, waistcoat not a vest. But specifically for black tie, waistcoats are not necessary. Remember, the simpler, the better. A, a waistcoat and a cummerbund, cummerbund are never, ever worn together. So it's like wearing a belt and braces. It's like, why do you need double the security? Like Santa Claus has a belt with a buckle. If you see like the Coca-Cola pictures of Santa Claus, and then he also has, um, he also has braces, which it's like, how much help do you need holding up your pants? A white handkerchief in the left breast pocket is a classic detail. Variations of black tie. In the country for dinner parties with neighbors and especially in his own home, a man may wear a velvet smoking jacket, usually navy blue, burgundy or dark green with a black bow tie, dinner jacket, trousers and evening slippers. So I actually got, I, I actually love velvet in a color for black tie when it comes to jackets because it, sta it stands out so much and it is so rich. That's why Tom Ford has so many velvet um, dinner jackets for gentlemen. And also it, it makes people stand out if you are, if it shows a bit of your personality. I think, it, I think they're beautiful and I got my husband um, a handful of them. While this dress is acceptable for the host, it would not be right for a guest to wear this for an event with the dress code black tie actually stated on an invitation, which eventually means a dinner jacket. Evening slippers, sometimes monogrammed or crested, may be worn and are more often found in the country, so in the countryside. Unless national costume is specified, the usual form would be when in Rome, but in practice, smart equivalent dress from a person's home country, for example, an Indian Nehru jacket or Arabian robes may be acceptable. A fashionable inter interpretation of black tie, when a black tie instead of a bow tie is worn with a dinner jacket is often referred to as Hollywood black tie. 
for most formal private black tie events in Britain, this would look unsuitable. So this is a very, um, very American thing, North American, I should specify. Black tie for women. Here are all the things that are entailed that should be adhered to when it comes to women's black tie. This is a very beautiful dress, by the way. I saw this online and I wanted to buy it. <laughs> I love the color on her skin. It's it's beautiful, like deep autumn, warm tone color season. So women should wear an evening dress or skirt, long or at least not very short, is usually best. There is a difference between a formal dinner and a dinner dance. Avoid wearing voluminous dresses for a dinner because they're not practical. However, very tight red carpet dresses or those with a dramatic split while stunning when making an entrance can be uncomfortable or inappropriate at a formal event that involves both a reception and a sit-down dinner. So there are spanks made by, or I should say skims because it's by Kim Kardashian that are meant for this. So it has one leg that is short, a short sleeve for the leg, a pant leg, I guess I should say. And then the other side has a long one. So you can wear a high slit at an occasion and show off your leg. And there is also fashion tape that may help you and keep this in your clutch so that you, in case there are malfunctions, you can readjust them in the bathroom later. If not wearing a long dress, then a cocktail dress, a fitted dress to very slightly below the knee and with a little décolletage is an option. The fabric should be suited to evenings such as silk, crepe or chiffon. Even, evening, evening trousers are an option, but it is better to go for a palazzo cut rather than tight fitting. Flowing ethnic inspired tunic tops with trousers may be worn if the event is at a less formal end of the spectrum. If in doubt, consult the hostess. And although the dress code is black tie, dresses need not to be black equally. Wearing black does not ensure that the right level of formality is there. So I should not end up in that sentence with a preposition. I'll, let me fix that. Equally, wearing black does not ensure the right level of formality. Tights should be worn, black or sheer. Fine or costume jewelry is appropriate, but not tiaras. An elegant evening bag should be used. Ideally, an evening coat would be worn as for white tie. Parties. Parties often do not fit into the more traditional formats of white tie, black tie, or smart casual. They may even be fancy dress. The key thing is to change for the event and not to wear work clothes. So a lot of people have the tendency to wear work clothes on the weekend and take off the tie and just open up their shirt. And then that's casual or smart casual. This Don't just... Another thing is to avoid wearing jeans, avoid wearing jeans, avoid wearing jeans. They're uncomfortable. Um, they are messy. They are just a pain. So, and they make everything look so much more casual. If you want to be dressed up, lose the denim. When an event is the, unless that's what it says in the party invitation, or that's the code, the dress code that, you know, people are going to go for wear jeans, but jeans are very casual. De jeans are more, remember that jeans were invented by a farmer and are farming fashion. So you have to, the only time you wear jeans is when you're working in the backyard, if you're gardening and if you're on your knees doing hard work. That's how jeans should be associated. When it, an event is themed, it may be hard to judge the formality. So take on the take on board the style of event as indicated by the invitation and the venue and ask the host. It is now acceptable for men at relaxed yet formal evenings to wear a velvet jacket Nehru collar jacket or moleskin suits with an open necked party shirt. Shirts may be shirts may feature non-formal prints, for example, small flowers or brighter colors. These jackets and shirts may be coupled with a smart dark colored jeans or trousers. Such combinations indicate an effort has been made, whereas a dark suit may indicate that a man may not have tried to put together an evening look. Women should make it clear that an effort has been made Theme parties can be a minefield. While it is good manners to make an effort and disrespectful to ignore hosts' requests, that doesn't necessarily mean, for example, hiring a full th theatrical outfit or feeling miserable all evening. At the very least, well-chosen accessories or jewelry can indicate the style of period required. Morning dress. This is probably my favorite um, the occasion where so morning dress is also known as formal day dress the jacket is always referred to as morning coat morning dress is traditional for men at weddings formal memorial services some official functions and formal daytime events in the presence of the queen and some seasonal 
and some season locations, such as the Royal Enclosure at Ascot. Morning dress should not be specified to be worn at an event starting at 6 p.m. So this is morning day dress, uh, so morning dress. So for men, a black or gray matte morning coat, single black, single breasted with peaked lapels, curved front edges sloping back to the tails. The reason for this is because they used to ride horses and they needed something that could go behind them instead of that was formal in their uniform when they rode a horse without it getting in the way. So if they needed to reach into their pockets or reach on a, on a sheath or whatever is around their belt, this is what they wore when they were gentlemen or knights or warriors back in the day. So this is how the dress translated into today, which is why it has the tail, the not tails, but it slopes back. Trousers are gray or black striped. A white or light colored shirt with a white turn down collar, double cuffs and cufflinks. Waistcoats, this is very important, are usually buff, gray or duck egg blue and double or single breasted. Double breasted waistcoats may have a lapel, either shawl or lapique and are fully worn and are worn fully buttoned. So single breasted waistcoats either have a step collar or no collar and the lowest button is always left undone, always left undone. Fancy waistcoats, such as those worn by members of the Eaton Society, like my dad, are sometimes worn, especially at weddings. Avoid anything backless, please. Ties are preferred to cravats. A smart woven silk tie is acceptable. A tie pin will add an extra flourish of dandyism. Highly polished, not patent black lace-up smart slip-on shoes. A gray or black top hat is worn with morning dress or racing, but at most other events, it is carried rather than worn and may be dispensed with. A handkerchief may be worn in the left breast pocket with an understated buttonhole. Morning dress for ladies. Smart daywear, such as a dress or skirt worn with a jacket. Dresses should not be too short or too revealing. They may be worn with no jacket in summer, but if so, should be modest with sleeves or at least to narrow straps. Shoulders may be covered by a bolero, shrug, or pashmina, but a tailored jacket or coat is better for the races or smart weddings. Avoid very high heels or evening style shoes. Wedges are sensible if it may be soft underfoot, for example, around churchyards, marquees, or race courses, so on the grass. Tights should be worn, so they should be the color of your skin. Daytime jewelry. Pearls are a very good choice. Keep it simple for daytime jewelry. Hats are usual, especially at weddings, but not always required. They are essential for certain season settings, such as the Royal Enclosure at Ascot. It is best to choose a hat that may be kept on throughout the day, which is securely fitted. So they will pin it to their heads or it will have like a headband and fascinators are usually that way. Also, a long time ago, it, even in America and in England today, technically you are not fully dressed if you do not have a hat. So if you go outside and are not wearing a hat, that means your outfit's not finished. There's something in film when you when you watch a movie, you will notice that if they pan down the outfit, you will see the shoes. And if you do not show the shoes, there is no point in showing the outfit. So if you have an outfit in an, in the most formal day dress, in morning dress, it has to have typically a hat. That's why at weddings there will be hats because it's formal, it's a formal occasion. Also, I think hats are just another way to elevate your look <laughs> and look more glamorous and put together and really like it brings it to it brings your outfit to another level so this is also something that you will see if you go to london quite a bit there will be a lot of gentlemen in full dress so if they work on savile row it's kind of like if you work at bmw all the people who work at BMW will have BMWs. If you work at Savile Row, everybody will be dressed impeccably. And they have their braces, they have their beautifully cut shirts, and super crisp, and their jackets, and they will have a hat and sometimes some shades, depending on who it is. And that's very normal in London, so, and in the city in general. Lounge suits. This is what we call suits in America. <laughs> so it is the smartest of informal dress codes, the lounge suit is an expression only seen on invitations. So if you see lounge suit on an invitation, this is what they mean. In conversation, the terms dark suit or business suit or possibly business dress or business attire are used. So if they say business attire, this is what they mean. Lounge suits for men include, uh, so lounge suit dress code is 
used for occasions with various degrees of formality and means a suit worn with a shirt and tie. Lounge suits are worn for most business events, both daytime and evening. So this is what you wear day to day, essentially. And for many social events, such as lunches, receptions, dinners, weddings, christenings, and funerals. Dark suits are also correct for flat racing other than events such as Ascot. They may be worn at dinner parties, especially when people come directly from the office, but are less acceptable at country dinner parties. So if you go to London, you'll see any type of pub or any type of restaurant or gastropub, more typically pubs, um, and they are filled with like a whole office of gentlemen in their lounge suits. So they'll all be standing outside in like, a, I don't know, a $5,000 suit and incredible shoes and a hat and drinking outside. And there will be like a hundred guys from a whole office crowding around this pub in London. It's it's really cool because I like to see the fashion. And a lot of guys in England talk about fashion too. Like it's no, it's more normalized there because um, they're so formal and they talk about, oh, this is Paul Smith. This is that. So <laughs> um, a three-piece suit consists of a single-breasted jacket, a single or double-breasted waistcoat, and trousers. When wearing a single-breasted waistcoat, the bottom button is always le is always left undone. A two-piece suit consists of a single-breasted or double-breasted jacket with trousers, no waistcoat. Belts should be on, should be worn on with a waistcoat or double-breasted suit. A shirt with a turn-down, not a button-down. Collar should be worn with a tie at the top button of the shirt must be done up. The most versatile knots are the four in hand and half Windsor. Large Windsor knots should be generally avoided, so keep it sleek, keep it smaller. Dark suits are still seen on the older rural generation at formal or official events, such as agricultural shows, where there is a luncheon tent for members of no for members or notables and for a day in London. Lounge, lounge suits for women. For evening events, a smart or cocktail dress with sleeves or a jacket is a suitable choice. For daytime events, women should wear a day dress, trouser suit, or skirt or jacket or coat. The overall impression is not quite formal as when the dress coat is morning dress. A neat tailored look is best for business with length on or just below the knee. So a pretty print and a looser and longer silhouette works best in the country. I have here some examples of proper suits that are more of a business and edgier look. So you can wear a dress or a skirt underneath as long as you have a proper jacket. It could be matching, it could be mix and match. And I just use these examples because this is what business attire would look like formally and if it's if you're at work i wouldn't wear the stilettos so high because three inches historically is already pretty high and i would wear a chunky heel especially if it's in the day but this looks like it's an evening look at the bottom right because um and same on the left because they are dressed up in stilettos so chunky heels for the day stilettos for the evening next is day to night oh yeah so also, this can go. This works better for women. So, day to night for women, if the dress code is lounge suits, women can alter their usual office wear. For example, by opting for a smart dress underneath a fitted jacket, and in the evening, the jacket can be removed. Modest heels can be changed for something higher, and a few bold accessories worn. So, this is the time you can go a little bit more flamboyant. Swap a daytime bag for something smaller and more elegant for the evening. So I just want to get this into this course and I just wanted to share with you guys that if you have been to Savile Row, Savile Row is the street for suits, for bespoke, typically bespoke suits in London. And if you know the brand The Row by the Olsen twins, it's named after Savile Row. And Savile Row is known for the suits, but German Street is known for the shirts. So England invented the suit, they invented the shirt the most formal types of wear. So this is why we wear them today. And I love Savile Row. I was just there and I was in German Street and I bought a bunch of shirts and uh, the shoes are incredible also. So Ralph Lauren is, um, his manufacturer is Crockett and Jones for his shoes for a very long time. And a lot of American brands and a lot of other brands like Gucci copy the American styles. For example, Gucci, Gucci o Gucci was a bellboy who worked in a hotel in London, saw everyone's incredible clothes, and he was obsessed with the equestrian style. So if you see the horse bit, 
if it, it is if you see the logo the emblem it has a horse bit in it and a lot of the things if you do not see the the gg which are my initials it's pretty fabulous fabulous initials <laughs> you will see the horse bit and that is the equestrian style equestrian style he was so in love with when he worked in england and so he uh it created this incredible design of style when it, it brought it back to Italy, where it's more sleek, it's more exaggerated. And in France, they have their rendition of a suit where it is more fitted. So if you see the prime minister or if you see the president of France, they are both in very, very tight suits because that's the style. And I'm sure that will change, but we, but I doubt that it will be oversized like here in America that we like to do on and off. Um, and sometimes in London too, but that is, uh, if you see Tom Ford and really high end couture and suit makers as Armani, they copy Savile Row. So Savile Row has a bunch of brands that are all royal warranted. So you'll see since the time of Napoleon III or King George and all the wa royal warrants of all the royalty that shop there on their store, literally on the glass really big so that they show that they have been there a long time, that they are a heritage name. And each American, each brand copies one of the suits. So if you see in Savile Row, the t different types of suits for each brand, they all have a very distinct style. And styles, suits, excuse me, designers around the world copy each style. Like Tom Ford has like the Huntsman style. Armani has, I don't know, um, Jeeves and Hawks style. So it's always different. So. That's just a little piece of interesting information. Formal smart casual. So first I'm going to start with smart casual. So smart casual can be the hardest dress code to interpret and a great deal depends on the invitation and type of event. A printed invitation suggests a smarter event than a text or email. Formal smart casual for men includes I'm going to get into this. So this is a lot. <laughs> so it is worth remembering that town or city events will generally be more fashionable and formal than those held in the country. So a village. So I'm going to explain what is a town, what is a village, what is a city. A city has a cathedral. A town has, I think, I forgot, a church with like a clock tower, I think. And then a village has just a church. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, so if you go to different parts of Europe, you'll see this a lot and they will refer to it differently. And they dress, di the reason why is because they dress differently in these different places. There are different codes of conduct. So similarly, if the host or hostess is very traditional or of an older generation, then the style may be more formal. For men, smart casual requires a jacket or blazer, flannels, needle cord trousers or chinos, not jeans. So flannels just means um, the material. A shirt with a collar, not a t-shirt. T-shirt is underwear, just know this. And smart shoes, not necessarily lace-ups, but not trainers or sandals. So nothing too casual or informal. A sweater may be worn if it is cold. Ties are not necessary, but carrying one is often a good tip just in case. Smart casual is usually a summer dress code, but if it is winter, then opt for an overcoat rather than an anorak or parka that looks too casual. A tweed sports jacket may take the place of a blazer and may be worn with cords or, or also known as corduroy or old fashioned cavalry twill. The reason corduroy was invented was because they wanted something casual that royals could wear. That's why it's called corduroy, cords of the royals. Formal smart casual for women. For formal smart casual events, a smart day dress worn with a jacket is a safe choice for women. At more casual events, dress down a little, for example, smart trousers or a skirt with a cardigan. Avoid wearing denim unless it is immaculate and balanced with a tailored jacket and smart accessories. Also avoid high heels and wearing suits as they look like business clothes. Such uh, sports clothes and sports shoes such as, tra such a as trainers are incorrect. Informal smart casual for men. It may be worth considering the details of the invitation before asking the host or hostess for advice. It can usually be interpreted as jeans for men, but smart, clean, dark color jeans. Remember you are going out, so char charge from what you have been wearing at home. Excuse me, so change from what you have been wearing from home. I cannot read my writing, please excuse my incoherence. Others than in high summer or on the beach, 
trousers are better than shorts and polo shirts better than collarless shirts just because an event is informal it is not synonymous with making zero effort so anytime a gentleman is wearing something casual it should be a polo the only time he should wear a t-shirt is if he is working out or is outside working uh, with some jeans on so doing some housework or um, inside as pajamas but the thing is to wear a polo if it truly is casual and polo is what you wear as a gentleman nonetheless in not just in the west but or i should just specify for this that in the west typically so um i also have to remind you that t-shirts are underwear and this is what i see about uh with america is that shirts are worn on the outside and this is normal where um short pants however should not be worn so shorts for gentlemen should not be worn unless you are at the beach or going on an outing that is very sunny but not a picnic trousers should always be worn one time when i first married my husband he um <laughs> was dressed appropriately for the day and we we didn't have plans to go anywhere so i asked him where are you going what are you doing and why are you dressed up and he said because it's daytime and so the finishing school he went to was the raf where um prince william went and then i think prince harry went to the navy so yes the raf so military is typically finishing school for gentlemen because that's where they network that's where they discipline themselves that's where they learn how to dress up, how to eat, how to carry themselves, even confidently walking in. It's really fascinating. So informal, smart, casual for women. Study the invitation and dress for the occasion at the time of day and season. Denim should be immaculate and sports or beach clothes avoided unless the occasion demands. However, too much tailoring and heels can look wrong. And if you are unsure, excuse me, if you are unsure, find out as much as possible about what other people are intending to wear. And if that isn't possible, ask the host or hostess. It is always more polite to the host to dress up. Come as you are rarely means what it says. Be prepared to adjust your outfit at the last minute. For women, this may mean dressing down an outfit, for example, swapping heels for flats, taking off dressy jewelry or removing a jacket and putting on a cardigan. Dressing well is simply dressing appropriately. That's how you show your best effort and express yourself elegantly. And I want you to remember that you want to overdress a little bit, not too much, but that you look out of place, but overdress a little bit that it lifts, excuse me for the trucks in the back, that it lifts the occasion because there are so many times where I've been to an event and people look at me and they see that I mark the occasion where other times I go to an event and I see people way too casual and it's supposed to be a nice event that the host is even saying something about it that they're disappointed and the ho they cheapen the event, they cheapen the experience by not dressing appropriately. So remember also that white is formal in the evening. So dress it carefully and in a lot of other countries outside the United States, for some reason after Labor Day or when Labor Day hits, all of a sudden white is not allowed to be worn anymore. White is year round. Country clothing. Dress codes in rural excuse me. Dress codes in rural areas may be wore may be more traditional than cities. Some guidelines on what to wear are based on practicality. Clothes should be appropriate for weather and outdoor activities and warm enough for drafty houses. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this is nearing the end. So it is wise to ensure that the dress is suitable for country pursuits. At the very least, a walk may be a likely eventuality. It is not advisable for a woman to wear very high heels and short tight skirt to a Sunday lunch in the country, which may include a walk. Instead, jeans or cords with a shirt or jumper would be a more appropriate choice. Also, if you're going to a church for a Sunday uh, lunch, I highly suggest that you wear a long skirt or some type of flowy um, garment. Country style and colors. Traditionally, black is still seen as a city color other than for funerals. Men wear brown rather than black shoes and tweeds. Women might wear black for formal dinners or dances, but not for daytime. Women would not usually wear a tailored jacket indoors in a social rather than business setting, but might choose either a gilet or a jumper or cardigan. Outdoor weatherproof jackets are worn in preference to woolen overcoats. Colors are muted. Greens and browns are more rural than black or navy blue or any anything high-vis. Country sports, even 
If not practiced uh, or the inspiration for the correct style, it is worth noting, however, that that the wearing of jodhpurs or hacking jackets by fashionistas may cause amusement in country circles, so keep it simple. Dressing for an activity in which a person is not taking part is unwise and it looks really silly. So for an example, a, a man who is not actually shooting should avoid plus fours. Accessories. Scarves or woolen or fake fur hats are frequently worn by women, while flat, cla fa flat caps worn uh, are worn by men and walking shoes and boots are left at the door and slip on shoes such as loafers are usually worn indoors. The wearing of trainers indoors and outdoors is generally frowned upon so remember earth tones and you can wear a flat cap, city cap, cabby cap, cappy cap <laughs> like this in the photo but the way that ha hats were worn a long time ago was that a flat cap meant that you were working class, a top hat meant that you were the high the uppest up is the highest of upper class and then much much later a very new idea came along known as the middle class and that's when the bowler hats uh, were introduced into fashion so formality full-time country people tend to dress up for social and sporting events more than weekenders who may take the opportunity to dress down and this can cause clashes of dress codes as for other dress codes err on the side of effort and do not be afraid to ask in advance what others are going to be wearing. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. Subscribe and click the bell to never miss a post. Thank you so much Alessandro for suggesting this video. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and give this a like to help more people dress appropriately, dress well and present themselves at their best. <laughs>